Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius and welcome to another day in the fish room. So today I want to give you guys a quick look at how we built this 880 gallon plywood aquarium. Now I say it's going to be a quick look because that's all I have for you guys. When it came to actually building this plywood aquarium, I wanted to put so much attention into the actual build to make sure I get it right that when it came to actually getting footage of the process, um, I did miserable. I do have some footage. But this is no way a how-to video. This is just showing you guys what we went through to produce this here beast. Alright guys, I know I'm doing terrible when it comes to getting footage of the steps. However, this is just such a messy process. Don't want to damage my camera in the process. But we just finished um, applying fiberglass all over the body. Originally we were just going to do the seams, but I bought so much I was like, might as well do all of it. So this right here is covering every single wall in this here setup. So I'll turn the light on. You can see. It has that little rough look to it, but that is all fiberglass cloth. And then we're going to do one more coat for the final layer. But so far we've done three coats. We've done an original bottom coat. We had to do a coat before this, before that some um, cloth went onto it. And then the coat after the cloth, not even counting the cloth itself, is a nice coat. And then we're going to do one more final coat, which is going to be the thickest coat. And then we're going to be ready for glass.
So yeah, that's all the footage that I have for you guys. And of course, there was a lot of stuff left out. So I want to try to give you guys a summary of the entire process. And I also want to give you guys a price of this here aquarium. So first off, with my four pieces of plywood that I bought from the store, um, I just cut them. Now this thing is 8x4, so two of the pieces I didn't have to cut. I did not have to cut the bottom, I did not have to cut the back. Um, for the two sides, I just cut it in half. And for the front, we just cut out this here window. After the pieces were cut, we took them outside and I used fiberglass resin to give them a bottom coat. Now, I looked at different forums, I looked at different videos of how to build, build plywood aquariums. I never, look at these guys in there chasing each other. And it's a big tank. I thought that all aggression should be eliminated. And of course, there's still fights for dominance. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, but I looked on different YouTube videos of how to build plywood aquariums. No one else suggested this. This was just me seeking to go a step further. But yeah, I took those pieces of plywood and I did a bottom coat of fiberglass resin. Um, the fiberglass resin I bought from Home Depot. And it's not aqua aquarium safe. It's not meant for aquariums. However, it's not bad for a bottom layer. So that was just for extra security, just to give the wood a little bit extra strength. And the wood, every piece of wood used was pressure treated. So that also helped give a little bit of security. So if you notice that the plywood that we used was extra shiny, is because we gave it a nice bottom coat of fiberglass resin. After that, we brought the pieces down and we just built the tank. Um, the box itself, pretty easy. Just wanted the nice and secure. For connecting it, we used screws and the screws were like two inches apart. Going all the way down, wood glue, the whole 90 yards, just to make it nice and secure. After that, we built the frame. Um, just looked at a couple of examples on YouTube of different frames and we just went what we thought would have been most structurally sound. So on the side, we have these two by fours columns of two by fours just like this on the back it's just like this on the opposite side for the front of course because we had this window we had to come up with something a little bit more unique but at the same time very strong so we have the double beam right here we have the double beam down there double beam right there double beam over there right here we have a double beam so just try to make it as structurally sound as possible so after that we went and we sanded the box we covered it up while we sanded because we didn't want dust flying these other aquariums and then it was ready to waterproof the box to waterproof it we use a, an aquarium safe epoxy there are a number of different types of epoxy you can use a number of different brands but we decided to go with the most reputable which was pond shield um, pond shield just so many people had experience with this so many people have good things to say about it so even though it was probably the most expensive epoxy for this project um, it was worth it because it gives the most peace of mind. So we used Pond Shield. Originally I bought a three gallon container hoping that that would have been enough but of course that was not enough. And the crazy thing is that the price for Pond Shield went up right before we started this project. Now back in January I bought my wood and everything. I saw Pond Shield was like 370 and I said I was going to wait until right before um, I actually start building it. Turns out I waited until right before I started to build and the price jumped hundred dollars. So instead of paying 370 I ended up paying 470 with tax $500 for three gallons of Pond Shield. And that was for the first coat. After the first coat, I realized I needed more Pond Shield. So I ended up buying nine gallons altogether, which was $1,500 for Pond Shield. Maybe in the future, I'll try different epoxy because a lot of them were a lot cheaper. But for the first project, of course, you wanna be safe. So yeah, we used the Pond Shield for the first layer, the first coat. Went over everything, we went over these sides because these things I expected to get a lot of splashing and definitely we do get a lot of splashing. From this filter we get splashing all over here, the fish when they fight sometimes they splash so definitely was a good idea to apply pond shield all around here. So yeah we did the first layer, after that we decided to use um, fiberglass cloth all over. Now originally we were just going to do fiberglass cloth for the seams but I ended up buying 150 yards of that cloth because that was all available and um, we decided to go ahead and just do the entire body since I had so much of it. That same fiberglass cloth is used to repair bolts and things like that so of course that is the stronger way to go. A little bit more expensive but once again a peace of mind. So we had the first layer of pond shield, we put on another layer of pond shield, then we put on a fiberglass cloth and then after that we put another layer of pond shield. So the second layer and the third layer and the cloth all went on at the same time. Now that was followed by a fourth layer pond shield. And then after we did that, we flipped the tank over 
and we got ready to do the glass. Now this glass was extremely heavy, it's three quarter inch thick. thick. Um, it weighed at least 300 pounds. So we had the tank flipped over, we siliconed the front, and the weight of the glass itself was enough to just press down and really connect it to this wood. So there was no need for bracing or anything like that. You could if you wanted, but the glass itself was so heavy, it just smushed that silicone and gave a nice tight seal. We let that sit for about three days. Then we flipped it up, we had more pond shield. So we went ahead and did a fifth coat of pond shield. After that, we installed these here center braces. Um, All together, we have four of them. Two right here in the center. These two are two by fours. And after that, we have these right here on the edges. Now these would have been more camouflage, but these are, this is just one piece of plywood. We cut it with this nice little L shape to fit in there. But keeps it from bowing, going straight across. We have this right here, same thing on the opposite side. And then we have these two. These two I purposely set right here in the middle so that I could have this little island. You could have put them equally, but I think it's just as strong while at the same time being able to support these plants in the center. So we added that, we had added silicone around it. After that, the tank was ready for water. So we filled it up halfway just to do a test and we let it sit halfway for about three days. While that was testing, I came over here and just started working on my filtration. This was already existing on this tank and I just incorporated this in here. It's a little bit complicated, so I'm not sure how much detail I'm gonna go in in this video, um, but at the same time, it's very simple. So let me give you guys a quick look. So on this tank, we put in, we drill two holes. We have a one and one fourth inch hole right here for the bulkhead, and we have a one inch hole right here with the bulkhead. This is input and that is output. And look at the other side. We just have a simple PVC making it like, what kind of shape is that? I guess you call it a Z or S. Comes up here and I just have to make an S so that it reaches my height. The height of that PVC will determine the height of water in the tank. Don't want it too high because I don't want too much splashing. Don't want it too low because I want the most gallons in my aquarium. Um, originally I bought, I had it set up so that I had this strainer to prevent fish from going down and the only fish that would go down is my ghost knife because he's like crazy but so far so good I gave him a nice cave over there so he really doesn't bother that cave is bigger he is a big fish he's like 20 inches so he has no reason to go down there if he does go down there no problems because he goes in well like I said there's problems because he comes down here I had this union right here because in case I want to do maintenance down here it's easy to separate it so that was important also a cutoff valve in case necessary comes in and it goes in there. There's no water in it. It was water, but it's no sitting water, so the ghost knife will be in trouble if it goes down there. But it goes down there and it goes in some, I guess I could give a little bit of an explanation. Um, let me bring this light over or the light won't come. One minute. Okay, so here we have it. You see I have a couple of chambers. Before it definitely was, wasn't this complicated in this first chamber. One of the problems I had was I had way too much um, K1 media. My idea was to get as much as you can, but I was getting so much that it wasn't even moving. So I had to decrease the number, so I put some in here. Of course in here, when it's not moving, it's not having the same advantage, but I believe it's better to have it in here when it's just so stuffed that it can't move. The purpose of K1 is that when it rotates like that, it bumps into each other and it keeps live and fresh beneficial shoot bacteria on it compared to other media which just sits still. But yeah, we have the water coming from this tank and it goes into this one chamber. This one chamber I have a filter pad on top as you can see. We have about four to five inches of K1 media. K1 media combined with some of these cubes right here. I um, just bought these, testing these out. So far they definitely, look at that, they hold a decent amount of water. They have a bunch of surface, surface area. So they definitely um, should hold a lot of beneficial bacteria. And then after that we have a couple of pads in there the water leaks out from the bottom and from the sides because i have holes all in it and all around here i have pads of mechanical filtration it goes to the bottom of this bucket and it comes out down there i have a bunch of lava rock for more what is that biological filtration and then more mechanical filtration then it pours in here and here i have all these k1 media a few bio balls and then on the bottom i have i don't want to drop my phone in here. On the bottom I have more of those cubes. I also have somewhere in here some blocks. 
I have a lot of these cues here everywhere, but I also have a different type of these right here. These right here, two of them cost forty dollars, but the thing is they have a very coarse material and they're supposed to hold a ton of beneficial bacteria. So yeah, I redid my filters and the goal was just to have as much beneficial bacteria as possible because that's the stuff that take away your nitrites, that's the stuff that lower your ammonia, that's the stuff that solves the worst problems in the aquarium. I wish I, maybe in the future I'll add a little bit more mechanical filtration because that will help me with water clarity. But my main important thing is with water, um, water health and just keeping it safe for the fish. So yeah, after that, all that goes in there, I have a pump pumping it up, sends it out over there, and then it sends it out over here, or wrong pipe, it sends it up through this one inch pipe, over, over, back into the tank. When it comes back in the tank, I use the spray bar. This is my first time using the spray bar. I always doubted um, the use or the significance of it, but it turns out it definitely has a significant role. It creates more surface agitation. Normally I like all my force coming out of my one output right here, but being that I have these extra holes, look at the extra surface agitation. Normally, if this was just here, it would just be this side. Maybe it'd be a little bit more forced, so it'd be a little bit more, you know, it'll be a little bit wider. But I believe that with the spray bar, it just creates a nice. So this whole side, let me zoom out for you. This whole side of the tank is moving that way because of the spray bar. So definitely not a bad movement. It goes down, makes a circle, and goes right back down to the drain. Now, I know I probably made that sound super simple, but it definitely wasn't that hard. It only took like half an hour to 45 minutes to put that together. So definitely very simple. So while, again, we're waiting, we have the water halfway, we're waiting for it to cure. Went on a hike, found some nice roots. Now, this was a construction site. This was at my local reservation. If you saw that video of the rules for collecting driftwood, I collected it from that same reservation. However, there was a work site. They were doing construction. They were digging, and they just had pieces laying around. No hard work, um, just picked them up, brung them home. For carrying these pieces of driftwood, I had to do something a little bit different because these pieces are pretty huge. This one piece right here is just like eight feet long. So no way you could boil that. So what I did was I used my Prazi Pro, which is a treatment for parasites. Now, if this is effective, who knows, because these are terrestrial parasites that I'm treating, but I used this in the spray bottle, sprayed the wood, scrubbed the wood, um, let it sit in like a little doggy tub outside, a doggy pool, and then I just put it in the tank like two days later. So far no problems, and I don't think I'll have any problems with it. After that, I filled the tank up all the way, got the filtration running. Um, the good thing about having your tank drilled is that it can handle a lot more water compared to tanks that's not drilled. Over here I have these overflows that's like hanging over, these are hanging the back overflows, and they are limited to how much water they could drain because the water has to go up then go down. With this drill tank, um, I can put so much water in here, so much pressure, it's amazing. So maybe in the future I'll upgrade my pump. For now, I believe that that flow is pretty decent, but in the future I may upgrade it so that this could get a little bit more flow because I did have to take away some flow before the tank was like up to here. So it did take a little bit of flow from there, so in the future I may upgrade it, but for now it gets the job done. Now, while I was redoing my filter, the entire tank got extremely dirty because, you know, when you mess with your media pads, it release all that um, detritus and buildup in there. So these two tanks were just so brown for the detritus. But that actually was a good thing because I do believe it released beneficial bacteria. So now I have more beneficial bacteria spread about. All that new media that I put in there, it has a chance to have beneficial bacteria in it because I released all that media in there. And because I was using media from that same filter i was able to put the fish in immediately so the day of the, the same day that i put water all the way in this tank the same day that i got my filters running i put two fish in that same night i went ahead and put the rest of the fish in now i told you guys that i'm enjoying this tank as a tank and as a pond as a tank in itself it's nice but the thing is it's on the ground i'm six feet tall so in order to get a full view i got to get down here maybe in the future i'll get some bean bags but um, not really the best view, but it makes up. It's not too bad because I have this awesome above view. So I didn't want to take away from that above view, and that's why I have these type of lids. These lids, they keep the fish in, 
at the same time they allow me to see what's going on in the tank. So this right here is chicken wire. Um, I'm not sure if that's the actual name, but this is the wire they use for chicken pens and stuff like that. And then we have this is fence wood cut into little pieces just to make these four little pieces. The back was a little bit tricky because I want my pothos to start growing. So I do have some nips and just random pieces in the back, um, but it gets the job done. These fish are not going to be jumping out with this here lid. So definitely not bad. Now it may not be too good when it comes to evaporation because obviously water can still evaporate. But um, as long as I have ventilation down here with my screen door and this window and fans and everything, it shouldn't hopefully be a problem. And then lastly, we created this here mini island. This serves as two purposes. One, for aesthetics. Eventually, this should look really awesome. And two, is more filtration for these fish. These plants will help consume nitrites. Um, they will help consume ammonia and just make this a safer environment for these fish, a more healthy environment for these fish. And also for me, because they're creating just cleaner air down here in this basement. So I just have some typical palm plants. This is umbrella palm. We have, this is um, bacopa. I'm trying dwarf sage immerse. It's not looking too good, but I'm hoping that it bounces back. We have some um, lucky bamboo. And this right here is, what is this? This is peace lily, a common house plant. Just experimenting, I may switch switch out, may try to grow some herbs and just different things. Then we have the pothos. I really have a lot of hope for the pothos. I want it to grow up and then I have these pieces of wood back here. I want it to grow all across that piece of wood. And if it does that, it's gonna make this thing look incredible. Now, as far as the aquascape of the tank, I wanted to keep it simple. Let most of the aquascape come from the roots. And the roots definitely do a nice job. They provide cover for smaller fish like that peacock bass right there. And at the same time, they look awesome. I have a few rocks on the bottom and I was just gonna add a few more rocks over there. I wasn't gonna do a substrate because um, a substrate is just, for this tank, it will cost a lot. And at the same time, a substrate just keeps dirt. So I will have a cleaner tank without a substrate. However, you see down there, I have some gravel. That's because when I first was putting these in here, um, the weight of the gravel just made it collapse. And now I have all that gravel down there. Luckily, it wasn't dirt, it was just gravel. So maybe in the future, I'll collect it. So far, it's not really causing a problem. The fish always like to play in it. So maybe I'll leave it. The fish, they do play in it. I do have snails in here, so maybe the snails will go hide in there. But it doesn't look bad, so I'll leave that in there. I'm not gonna go and fill the entire bottom because once again, it's gonna be expensive to do it. And it's also gonna make the tank a little bit dirtier, so I don't want that. But yeah, um, not gonna go too crazy when it comes to the scape. Maybe I'll put a few rocks over there just to balance it out. But yeah, nothing too complicated. Now there's just so much to talk about about this tank. However, this video is getting so long. So I'm just gonna finish it off with the actual price. So right here I have the prices of the products used and we're gonna come up with a total for this entire build. So first off, for the plywood, I used four pieces of plywood, going to a total of $140. I used two by fours. I had about 35 two by fours and that was like $120. For the bottom, I used deck wood. I forgot to mention that on the bottom I want a little extra support so I have deck wood um, going across 10 pieces and that's just a little bit extra support. I used 10 of those and that was $50. For screws it was about $35 for all the screws I used. For wood glue I used a waterproof wood glue and that was $15 for two of them. Um, the wood putty $8. Silicone $40 worth of silicone. The pond shield this was the most expensive. Nine gallons of pond shield was $1,500. Um, the fiberglass that I did for the bottom coat, that was $30. Fiberglass cloth, that was $70. The PVC over here was $60. The glass, I got lucky. The glass, a piece of glass like that, um, buying it from the manufacturer will cost like $500. I bought this off Craigslist from a guy who bought it at an auction, but bought it off Craigslist and PA for $300, so that definitely was great for a three fourth inch piece of glass and the dimensions was like 83 inches by 37 there's three inches taken away because i used that to connect the glass to the tank so you're yeah, definitely not bad with the glass after that um the stain for the actual color of the tank and the stain and paint together i'd say was about 12 dollars the lid the chicken wire with these pieces of wood was about 20 dollars and that is all and that gives us a grand total of 
and eighty dollars. I'm just going to say two thousand four hundred dollars because um, these pots and any other thing that I may have added. I really got to finish this up. My camera is telling me it's about to overheat. Um, but yeah, this tank is eight hundred and eighty gallons, and I paid two thousand four hundred dollars. Let's look real quick. Fish tanks direct. A 800 gallon aquarium that is 80 gallons smaller than this is $11,925 for an 800 gallon aquarium. So definitely save a lot of money compared to buying a new. Plus, I can never fit a brand new tank down that tiny little doorway. Um, on top of that, this tank right here, my 350 gallon aquarium, this tank I think it was like $3,000. Yeah, like $3,000 or something like that. So I definitely saved a lot of money on this here aquarium any questions comments let me know in the comment section below hope you enjoyed this video catch you guys on the next one